Well, hello there, VC, or anyone who who's watching this video. It's been a long time since I did a video, uh, and I uh, sort of been slacking off. Haven't had the inspiration. Don't have any good ideas for a video topic. So let's do another one, just like the other one. This is an. Uh, update of course been buying lots of uh, records and uh, so I got the stack to show starting off I bought a nice newly released uh, box set by Van de Graaff generator and this is the 50th anniversary limited edition deluxe box set of the aerosol grain machine the first album from 1969 which originally was supposed to be a Peter Hamill solo album but uh, morphed into Van de Graaff generator and their first album and this is a nice box set containing a booklet with a bio of the band and the recording uh, lots of pictures. Let me try to show you some of the pages. Here's the reel, I guess. Great pictures of uh, early pictures of Thundergraph generator. So I guess it's 16 pages or something everything you need to know about the aerosol gray machine also comes uh, a cover an LP cover the original released LP cover as a gatefold and within is a couple of CDs the original album with the way it was released and some uh, bonus tracks Nice uh, stage shot of the band there. A facsimile of uh, a couple of Peter Hamill produced posters, early Van de Graaff generator posters. And the quickly withdrawn single, People You Were Going To, backed with uh, Firebrand which is quite rare and very expensive if you seek the original and of course the cream of the crop in my opinion the original intended UK artwork this was supposed to be released on the Fontana label I guess or uh, if it was the Mercury label I don't remember but this is the intended artwork and the intended track listing. There are, I think, uh, a handful of original test pressings which got out with this cover art. This is just great. Should have been released this way. But it was never released in the UK. It was released in Italy and uh, the United States with the uh, conventional well-known cover so quite a nice package I don't know if it's limited or uh, how limited it is so you better get yours while you can well the reason I've been busy lately is because my band the band I'm playing in we are about to release an album and we have just gotten our LP 
of the press and this is what the cover looks like. The band is uh, Planet Master God and uh, the album is called There Are Snakes In These Woods. With a printed inner sleeve with the lyrics and the skull of course and the LP itself. Wow. So we are quite pleased how uh, this turned out. We have uh, pressed only 250 copies. So if you want one, just contact me. We are releasing the album in uh, late August, early September. So there's a plug for my band. Well, on to the finds. Been having a 10 years after kick lately and found this triple live set from uh, the Fillmore East in 1970. And man, this is a nice uh, live set. The whole band is on fire and of course, as always, Alvin Lee shoots from the hip. And uh, awesome, awesome live recording. Well recorded, good sound and very well played. So I recommend this live at the Fillmore East 1970. This is a 2018 reissue of a CD release from 2001. So if you like 10 years after, that's one I recommend. <clears throat> Bought an unofficial reissue of Jerusalem the one album band produced by Ian Gillen, released on the Derham label. The originals are crazy expensive, so this unofficial, identical reissue suits me just fine. I don't think it's a great album. It's a good album, but uh, I wouldn't want to shell out those big bucks for that one. A stack of long hair reissues, of course, for my crowd collection. Bought another copy of uh, Gift's uh, debut album. I played that in my last video, I guess, in the background. And the reason for me buying a long hair reissue is because it always comes with an insert with the biography of the band. And uh, long hair always, as I've mentioned earlier, always do a fantastic job in remastering and pressing these LPs and recreating the original artwork. So I had to get this one, so now I have an extra copy. If anyone's interested in VCLT, it's the second battle reissue from the early 2000s and second battle also is another great reissue label. I bought the Gift's second album, Blue Apple, which is sort of more progressive, uh, straight up rock. Uh, not as great as their first, which is more scruffy and hard and heavy, but uh, excellent as well. Also a long hair reissue. And Gift was a German uh, hard and heavy band, or kraut rock band if you will. Look while Richie. I'm fumbling with the plastic, I'm not prepared, and I know that annoys you, but I don't care. Another great example of uh, long hairs reissues is this one. I have the original, but uh, all the foam has been peeled off. This is Nine Days Wonders first album, another crowd rock band, sort of a Sapa-esque uh, Heavy progressive jazz rock, far out, and long hair has gone to the great lengths of exactly reproducing this cover in in the foam. The only difference is, of course, the long hair logo and uh, the custom labels with the original paneled in a uh, gatefold. So just marvelous, marvelous reissue label. And uh, these long hair reissues are quite affordable compared to the originals. Also with a booklet containing both bio and pictures. So 
well worth getting those long hair reissues. Fantastic sounding. It sounds actually better than my original Bacillus release. And that's the case for many of these quality reissue labels. When they do the remastering properly, go back to the master tapes and uh, do the job uh, with quality in mind, sometimes and quite often the reissues sound better than the originals. And that's the case for Long Hair, and that's the case for Second Battle, and Shadox and uh, Gears and all those reissue labels of quality. And that leads me over to the next one, because I had an absinthe reissue of uh, Waterloo, and their album First Battle. A Swiss hard and heavy progressive band, who released their only LP in uh, 1970 I believe, or yes, 70. And this is the Gerson reissue, which sounds so much better than the Absinthe reissue, which sounded good, but this sounds fantastic. So, if you're into early 70s hard and heavy European rock, Waterloo, first battle, excellent stuff. And I bought this at a record fair for, well, how much is that in dollars? Well, 17 uh, pounds, 15 pounds UK, uh, so that's quite cheap here in Norway, I tell you. Another excellent uh, reissue by the British band Pluto, they released only one album, sort of bluesy, hard progressive rock from uh, 71, originally released on the Dawn label, this is Music on Vinyl reissue. It's a, a solid album, so do check them out, Pluto, it's not uh, face melting, it's not a face melting mind boggling album, but it's a good one. <laughs> Saw it for a cheap price, so I had to get the uh, Yengis Khan Well Cut, their only album, another Swiss, no sorry, Belgian hard and heavy band from the early 70s. I have the original, but uh, you get a fresh remastered reissue for a nice price. That's always awesome. So uh, my original can rest. <laughs> I'm just whipping through these because uh, I have a lot to show. Another long hair repress, uh, reissue, sorry, for my crowd collection, Gomorrah's second and last album. I turned to see whose voice it was from 1972, originally released on the Brain metronome label. Just awesome, awesome melodic, hard and heavy, progressive crowd rock. I do love these bands. Uh, psych, progressive rock and especially crowd rock is close to my heart. So. It's always nice to find these uh, reissues and buy them in bundles because uh, get a nice discount and everything. And then, of course, later down the line, buy the original if I can find one for an affordable price. Anyway, that's Gomorrah, another crowd rock band. You know by now I dig crowd rock. And always show a batch of crowd rock records. Amos Key, their first album, which I believe is called First Key. A solid uh, progressive uh, German uh, band from the early 70s. Not, a, not an essential album, but a solid one. Also a long hair reissue. Always those cool inserts, the insides of the band. And I wonder what they were thinking in the art department. This is the front cover, quite uh, anonymous. This is the back cover, very cool. And this is the inside, so... Well, <laughs> sometimes they got it backwards, I think. But anyway, good music.
Another kind of hard progressive jazz rock outing from Germany, Alcatraz, and their only album, I believe, Vampire State Building. Also an excellent uh, German band. And another long hair reissue. I don't need to show to prove that they all have inserts, but they do. So, if you are in the part of the world where those long hair reissues are readily available, go get them. They're certainly worth the money. Another long hair reissue, I haven't uh, spun this yet, but I know it's good. Kravinkel, their first self-titled album. Another sort of jazz rock band, Zion, Time Machine, their second album, which I've been wanting for a long time, haven't split this open yet either. Another long hair reissue. And here's some unreleased material, I guess it's uh, live in the studio, a radio session or something by Zion. This is called Mandala and it's recorded in 1972, so here long hair releases uh, unreleased material. I've been on a soft machine kick lately, so I was glad to find this one, which is called Jet Propelled Photographs. Um, a compilation or a, a set of uh, tunes recorded uh, before their debut album. Uh, let me have a look here. It was really uh, it was recorded in 1967, I believe. It says audio file quality, even though the recordings are quite uh, crudely done. <laughs> Yes, Georgiou Gomelski was the producer for these sessions. So, here you get early versions of uh, Save Yourself, um, Shooting at the Moon, and uh, of course, uh, um, what's the other one? What's the other one? A certain kind, I believe, is on here as well, an early version. So. Essential if you dig early soft machine with, uh, of course, Kevin Ayers and uh, Robert Wyatt, and also <laughs> David Allen is on this one. Excellent, excellent stuff. Well, that was the reissues I'm whipping through, so I know I have uh, enough memory on my phone. Some originals for you. I bought a first issue of uh, ah, fuck, of Spooky Tooth's first album. It's all about original UK uh, island bullseye label, and I don't know, but uh, but uh, Spooky Tooth has never clicked with me. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this one, I got it for a very good price, but uh, compared to Art Supernatural Fairy Tales, which is almost the same band two years before, or one year before, they, this is a step down in my words, because the band Art and that album was a magnificent psych masterpiece. So this is more in the sort of uh, melodic, soulful, blues, hard, uh, hard rock vein with psychedelic elements of course, but uh, not in the same league as art. Another one for you uh, US watchers, The Fallen Angels first album. This is an original uh, UK copy on London Records. A quite accomplished uh, psychedelic uh, album here. I would of course like to find their second one which is uh, even rarer, better and pricier, but this UK copy of their first album was uh, quite welcome in my collection, so <laughs> nice find there. <coughs> Another psychedelic, progressive, uh, jazz, rock sort of band, 
Warm Dust and their first album for our time. Peace for our time, sorry. And uh, an original in very nice condition, sold in Norway in 1970 when it was released. This is a price sticker, a price code for the Norwegian market. LP4 was the standard uh, price and uh, LP6 was double albums. On the trend label, if you haven't seen that label before. A good album, not essential, but uh, a nice one to pick up. If you can find it for uh, a good price and they tend to show up for good prices not uh, not too pricey at all now we're getting into the last three and uh, the grail section back to germany crowd rock at its finest one of my favorite german lps and bands it's message and their second album from books and dreams Wow, I found this for a very decent price. The only drawback is that it's the second issue from 1976. But upon scrutinizing this uh, LP, I found that it's the same matrix numbers as the first issue. So it sounds perfect. It's quite uh, a muddy recording, but uh, that's the way I like it. If you're not familiar with Message, I've shown them before. Heavy, progressive, very melodic. And this album especially is eerie. It's a masterpiece. Uh, go and check it out on YouTube or uh, Spotify. I don't think all the tracks are on Spotify, but uh, the first side with Sleep, Dreams and Nightmares and Turnover. Wow, just marvelous. So, the search goes on for a first pressing, but uh, I'm quite content with that second pressing from 76. Another grail of mine from uh, Netherlands, which I never thought i come to own, but the other day I did. It's Earth and Fire, not to be confused with Earth, Wind and Fire. This is the Dutch uh, progressive uh, hard and heavy band and this is uh, actually not the original release from uh, the Netherlands. It was originally released in 1970 in a matchstick uh, matchbox cover but in 1971 it was released in the UK with a totally different artwork made by Roger Dean and this is a die cut cover very fragile and I don't know if you can see it but behind here is a witch hidden in the die cut awesome awesome cover art by Roger Dean so this is the UK original from 1971 on the Nepenta 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 I don't know how to pronounce it but uh, there you go ne Nepenta label which was a subdivision of uh, Philips. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And the music is fabulous. Heavy guitars, pounding drums and bass, swirling organ, a bit of flute here and there, but not too much. And excellent, extraordinary female vocals by, uh, what's her name? Journey Kogman or something. Last up for today, if I have the time, last up for today is another addition for my Swirl collection. I found a pristine copy of Still Life's only album on the UK Vertigo Swirl label. Wow! These are hard to find in good condition. And this is almost near mint. Excellent plus, I'd say. No need really to show the label, but I want to show off. <laughs> so, now I have an extra copy of uh, Still Life for sale or trade if anyone's interested. This is my old copy. Sadly, it has a tear 
right through the skull on the back here. Otherwise, a decent copy, VG to VG+. Plus. So, let me know if you're interested. And if you have any ideas for good uh, video topics, let me know. I'm drawing a blank here. And I am uh, I'm tending to think uh, these update videos are getting a bit boring. Just show you what I bought. But um, my mind's uh, drawing a blank on good topics. Perhaps a spotlight video on something, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you're all doing well and are enjoying your summer. I'm still on a summer break from uh, teaching. Still got a couple of weeks and I'm going to Gothenburg in a couple of weeks. So uh, perhaps, perhaps I'll find something interesting there. Well, see you later, alligator. Ho ho ho. Bye for now.